Hi there, I'm Maddie Harland and I'm one of the founders of Permaculture Magazine. It's an international publication about um, all things sustainable and green and low impact. And I'm sitting in my no-dig vegetable garden, which is really near the house. So in permaculture design terms, it's zone one. So we started this vegetable garden ooh, a long time ago, about 25 years ago, when we first got the garden extension. Where I'm sitting was an arable field. It had no soil life whatsoever. And so our first um, thought was we want to restore this as a biodiverse wildlife habitat. But then we discovered permaculture and we really got the link between um, healthy food and growing it at home and minimising our, our ecological impact in the world and creating conservation and wildlife habitats. So we, we do love our companion planting. Uh, in a way the whole garden is the companion to the vegetable patch. There isn't a sort of separation of this is our ornamental garden or this is our wildlife garden and these are our veggies. We, we like to blend and have as much edge as possible. And, and the reasons for this is because we want wildlife in, in the garden, not only for the pleasure, but also for the pet, predator pest control balance. But one of the really simple things that you can do is just grow pot marigold at the edge of uh, a bed to bring in beneficial insects. And this all started with just a few seeds a few years ago. They go to seed and, and then they'll, they'll seed. We transplant them to places where we want them, usually on the, on the edges. They add colour and they're just a really good companion plant for veggies. So the idea of this garden was always that it would be no dig, that we would always use a lot of mulch to not have bare soil, cover the soil as much as we could um, to mimic natural principles. And, and to grow completely organic, fresh veg for as much of the year as we possibly can. So that this is our overhanging bean uh, structure. The great thing about it is the beans hang down so you don't have to search for them. And it means that you pick every bean that's available so that the plant keeps growing as long as the season lasts. And it also has another advantage that Underneath it you can grow things like salads that in the height of summer tend to bolt. Um, so once these beans are up and over this arch it will cast more shade and that will hopefully prevent some of the difficulties with bolting crops. We do grow, tend to grow in, in rows. It just makes it much easier to hand hoe. Um, and we do use our own garden compost. So I'm looking at the bed in front of me just here and I, I can see that I've got some volunteer tomato seedlings from last year, which you know would not grow true, but they're easy enough to hoe out between the leeks. So one of the themes of this garden is thinking about how you can not only grow crops on the horizontal so here I would say that these courgettes are horizontal but also what can I fit in on the vertical to create structure and interest and contrast in the garden so here this little guild is a mixture of some self-seeded flowers at the front poppy and marigold once again two different types of courgette and then a couple of very large sunflowers which we'll really enjoy when they come into full flower in a few weeks. To be quite honest, now um, in year 25 or so of this garden we have very very few slugs because we have a lot of slow worms and birds, we have thrushes in the garden that eat the snail and, and we also have toads and frogs that love the habitat of the wildflower meadow and the, and the long grasses. It wasn't like this at the beginning, you know, that we were plagued with slugs until we got our ponds and our habitats established. So this is how we like to grow our squashes. 
in this bed for the whole of spring until about two weeks ago were broad beans and we've cropped the broad, broad beans, taken them out but at the same time we start off squash plants uh, as the broad beans are maturing. So the idea of this bed is to stack in space and time. So to stack by having a vertical crop starting off while we've got a horizontal crop um, and also then to mix two crops so when one matures the other one takes over and will festoon this bamboo um, with hanging squash and it's really delicious. In the sense of utter pragmatism if I was going to design this garden for maximum yield, I would have uh, rectangular beds because rectangular beds are much easier to net from cabbage whites and, and to protect against frost with fleece and all those very sensible practical things. But when we started this garden, we, we actually were given these railway sleepers, uh, which incidentally we have lined with with um, a heavy duty plastic because the railway sleepers can leach um, tar in, into beds which is carcinogenic and at that time the easiest way to lay them out was to not cut them so to lay them out in triangles and we were also because this is right next to our patio and, and house we we wanted to make a sort of potager garden that had flowers as well as vegetables and we were looking to make it look as attractive and beautiful as we could. Hence the comfrey hedge that you'll see around it because we wanted to give it a boundary that was also really practical. So the comfrey hedge is there, it brings in lots and lots of gorgeous bumblebees particularly in, in its first flowering in, in the spring. Uh, it delineates this part of the garden and then we cut it and compost it or, or use it as a fresh comfrey mulch on, on the beds in between crops. So this is just a small greenhouse, it's eight by six foot. Uh, so it's just a little domestic greenhouse and we like to grow as much as we can in it. So at the back is a peach tree which is wonderfully productive. Tim prunes it so it's espaliered and it's actually not on a rootstock. So it's an own root peach and the original peach stones come from uh, an eco-village uh, near Berlin called Zeg a eco village and were given to me by Achim, a permaculturist and, and gardener. And he'd selected the best um, peaches from stone and grew them all around the eco village. And he gave me a bag full and I brought it home and propagated some. And this is one of our most successful peach trees. It fruits gorgeous, luscious, large peaches every year. Um, and it's really delicious. You can't grow a, a healthy garden without really wonderful soil. And the way to get wonderful soil is not to buy it in a bag, but make it yourself. So compost everything. There's loads of information out there on composting. Uh, we compost absolutely everything we can in this house. So kitchen waste, all of our weeds, any trimmings from the garden. And then um, we, we also shred all our paper in the office and we, we also use cardboard layers in the compost bins. And tiger worms love cardboard and munch it up quickly and it sort of creates a breeding habitat. So um, we make a lot of compost and we turn it too. We don't just make a thing of compost and leave it. We turn it at least once and that hugely speeds up the process and, and makes much healthier compost. So if you want to find out more about permaculture, we publish a permaculture magazine, which is quarterly, and that's available all over the world. It's in print, but we also have a digital edition. 
uh, that you can find out more about at our website. We've published over a hundred books on permaculture and other related subjects and there are e-book versions of those but we also like to do the gift economy so we've got a whole um, collection of free e-books some introductory some in more detail and they're all available on our website as well.